Dr. Milton Wainwright seeks to persuade the public that he has discovered advanced life hovering approximately 25 miles above Earth's surface. However, despite the eagerness of tabloids to embrace his narrative, the scientific community remains hesitant to endorse his findings. If one were to come across life existing at an altitude of 25 miles above the surface, it would undoubtedly be an extraordinary occurrence. Traditional aircraft do not reach such heights, and although it is arguable whether powerful volcanic eruptions could disperse living cells to such altitudes, there is no evidence to suggest that a volcanic eruption was responsible for this discovery. Therefore, if any form of life were indeed able to float at such heights, it would undoubtedly merit thorough investigation. Oddly enough, further investigations haven't occurred, and the scientific world doesn't want to pursue this discovery any further. So, why haven't scientists shown more interest in this phenomenon? Dr. Wainwright, a microbiologist employed in the Department of Molecular Biology and Biotechnology at the University of Sheffield, has been attempting to inform the scientific community about his belief that Earth is being actively targeted by advanced beings. According to his theory, these advanced life forms are implanting minuscule living probes into our atmosphere using microscopic metal spheres, which are intelligently designed to seed life on our planet. Predictably, this assertion was met with skepticism among researchers, prompting him to adopt an alternative strategy. The teacher sent his findings to his students via email, and a portion of them shared it on various social media platforms. So, what is the reason behind the lack of belief from the majority? The evidence is interesting, and one photograph shows a mysterious orb that appears to contain an unidentified biological ooze. Additionally, his studies have been published in the Journal of Cosmology, a publication that has faced criticism for its questionable peer review process and outdated design from the 1990s. Also, scientists and researchers that have presented their research into advanced life usually get looked down upon by the scientific world, with some scientists going as far as refusing to talk about the subject. Dr. Wainwright clarified that the critics argue that the samples we collected could have originated from Earth. They believe that there must be a process that can carry these particles from Earth to the stratosphere. The DNA containing masses and other peculiar organisms we have identified are not related to pollen, grass or fungal spores found on our sampler. If our organisms had indeed come from Earth, they would have been contaminated with typical Earth organisms, but this is not the case. Based on his statements, the organisms exhibit DNA presence and possess masses exceeding the size threshold for particles that can be transported from Earth to this altitude. Additionally, he assures that he thoroughly examined for potential contamination using high-altitude balloons. Dr. Wainwright informed scientists that they conducted an experiment involving balloons and a sampler, and they discovered that there was no pollen or grass present in the samples. This suggests that the samples were completely pure and unaffected by any outside contamination. Based on these findings, Dr. Wainwright believes that the organisms found in the samples are likely originating from space. He further explains that whenever we venture outside, we are constantly bombarded with organisms that originate from space. Wainwright has previously reported similar findings on multiple occasions. In 2013, he observed a similar phenomenon suspended 16 miles above the Earth's surface. As mentioned, he shared an image depicting a small metallic sphere emitting a viscous substance collected from the Earth's stratosphere by a balloon. However, his research did not undergo proper approval or recognition and nobody has attempted to replicate his findings. It leaves us wondering whether Wainwright's discoveries are simply a peculiar outcome of scientific exploration or if they hold significant meaning. The truth remains uncertain. Panspermia an ancient concept rejuvenated by modern astrobiological research hypothesizes that life exists throughout the universe, distributed by cosmic dust, meteoroids, asteroids, comets, planetoids, and spacecraft in the form of microbial life forms or biochemical precursors of life. In its simplest form, panspermia suggests that life or the necessary elements to initiate life could survive the inhospitable vacuum of space encased in cosmic bodies and be dispersed throughout the cosmos. This notion offers a counter-perspective to the conventional idea that life began on Earth, asserting that our planet might instead have been seeded by advanced life. 
This transference of life could occur through various mechanisms. Lithopanspermia involves rocks or other matter being ejected from a planet due to a significant event like an asteroid impact. This ejected matter, potentially containing microbial life or its precursors, could travel through space and eventually land on another planet. If the new planet's conditions were hospitable, the contained life forms could propagate, effectively seeding life. Alternatively, radiopanspermia proposes that tiny life forms or organic molecules could be pushed across space by the radiation pressure from stars. The theory of panspermia, once consigned to the realm of science fiction, has gradually found support from various scientific observations and experiments. First, some microorganisms, such as tardigrades and specific types of bacteria, have exhibited impressive resilience to the harsh conditions of space, including extreme temperature fluctuations, vacuum conditions, and cosmic radiation. This extreme resilience underpins the viability of panspermia. Secondly, organic molecules, the building blocks of life, have been discovered in meteorites, comets, and interstellar dust clouds, suggesting that these essential ingredients for life are not exclusive to Earth, but are widespread in the cosmos. Perhaps the most compelling support for panspermia comes from the rapid emergence of life on Earth. Geological records indicate that life sprang up on Earth relatively soon after the planet became habitable. This abrupt appearance of life has led some scientists to speculate that life might have originated elsewhere and been transported to Earth. If panspermia is accurate, it raises fascinating possibilities about the prevalence and diversity of life in the universe. The seeding of life on Earth could imply that life originated from a location in the cosmos, with conditions more favorable to life's genesis, potentially Mars, or even a different star system. This idea is testable. Discovering evidence of past or present life on Mars or other celestial bodies, and analyzing their biochemistry, could reveal a shared ancestry with terrestrial life. However, Panspermia does not answer the fundamental question, how and where did life first originate? It merely suggests that life's birthplace could be somewhere other than Earth. Understanding life's origin, therefore, remains one of the biggest unsolved puzzles. Panspermia also significantly broadens the potential habitats for advanced life, extending them beyond planets and moons to include interstellar dust clouds, meteorites, and other celestial bodies. Consequently, it has considerable implications for astrobiology and the search for advanced life. While we have yet to confirm panspermia, the theory forces us to rethink the conventional Earth-centric perspective on life's origin and distribution. It nudges us to regard life as a cosmic, rather than a terrestrial phenomenon, shaped by galactic dynamics and planetary evolution. The question of whether life exists beyond Earth has fascinated humans for centuries. As our understanding of the cosmos expands, we have come to realize that the conditions for life might not be as unique as once believed. The first point to consider is our definition of life. Terrestrially, life is characterized by a set of features, including the ability to grow, reproduce, respond to environmental changes, and undergo evolution. However, life elsewhere in the universe might not follow these exact principles. Therefore, astrobiology often seeks to identify biosignatures, signs of past or present life, such as certain chemical imbalances or structures that would indicate the presence of living organisms. Next, we must consider the conditions needed for life as we understand it. Life on Earth requires a stable source of energy, like our sun, and a suitable environment, such as the presence of water, and an atmosphere with the right chemical components. With this understanding, astrobiologists have been able to identify numerous habitable zones around other stars where conditions might be right for life as we know it. So, what do you make of this recent discovery? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.